Hey, Edgelords, thanks so much for tuning in on your internet tuner. Uh, we want you to hit subscribe. Isn't that right, Rob? That's right. That way you'll get the episodes as they come out every single Wednesday. You need it and you want it. Oh, God, it's, ha- it's happening again. I, 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 I just never have the right amount of energy for this intro. You got to perk up a little bit. This should get you where you need to go because we are... The Edge Lords. It just uh, it actually hurts my eardrums a little bit. It's just too much rock. Yeah, yeah. You know? It's uh, not, not enough. Uh, not enough uh, smooth jazz. Not enough soul. Not enough know? smooth jazz going on here. Not enough Kenny G. That's what we should have gone with. It's just it's the kind of music you 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 like listen to when there's explosions happening behind you. Yeah, that's why. But there's uh, no explosions behind us. There's leaves. There's a green leaves. There's a forest behind yeah, us. Yes. Yeah, Robbie's got wallpaper. There's just a bunch of leaves. But sometimes I like to go into the forest and uh, meditate to some hard metal. Yeah. Yeah. Really relax. That's how I unwind. Yeah, I like to listen to some hard metal after a long, stressful day and just really, really ball up that knot. Yeah, in really? My, just get a... I, I love punch a tree. You punch a tree. Sometimes I go out to the forest. I like to punch trees. Yeah. Man. That's a. Uh, it's how I calm down. Man, that's cool. Yeah, and I hate nature. I hate it, and I want it to know. And I can't catch other nature. You ever tried to catch a like a gazelle or something? You can't do it. But a tree. I tried to catch nature. <laughs> yeah. Try to catch that nature yeah, over there. You gotta there. catch that nature. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I need me some nature. Catch that nature. Gotta catch that nature. Get that camera down. Get that future out of my face. Yeah. Trying to catch some nature. <laughs> trying to catch me some nature right now. You're getting in the way. I'm trying to poach. You got that future in my face. <laughs> That's uh, this is the opening of the Edge Lords. Uh, this is uh, our opening segment. This which, is what we do. Yeah. What's what's our opening segment called? I'm glad you asked. This week in edging. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. We hired a professional voice actor. Yes. To do our bumpers. Yes, it was Graham, and he he charged me much <laughs> too much considering his investment in this podcast. I did. This is a very special episode. We got. Um, I mean. I'm going to say they're all special episodes, but I'm excited for this one. We have our second guest ever, and he's a very funny and successful. He happens to be an old fan of you, or an old uh, friend of yours. Both. He's a Both. friend and a fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, old friend Yasser Lester is going to be here. Uh, you know him from that's all blowing, types of stuff. Blowing up. He sure is. Yeah, he's doing great. We'll we'll run through his, his uh, credits when we get him on here. We'll boost him up. Or blowing really up. For real, blowing up. Like not, not, this isn't hyperbole. It is not hyperbole. Follow that man on Twitter, for God's sakes. What's his handle? Uh, at Yasser Lester. It's real good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's no, the he's, king of Twitter right he's now. He's great on Twitter. He's great on Instagram. He's good on all the things. And while you're at it, give us a follow as well. You know, we're on that stuff as well. I think you should save your follows. Okay, save yeah, your follows. Yeah, don't follow you don't, Graham or I. No. I mean, you can get... You follow Robbie. He's good. I'm, I'm good on Instagram. I'm not good on Twitter. And on Instagram, you are Mr. Graham K. I'm Instagram. Instagram K. Instagram right, right, right. K. Yeah. And you can't be Graham K on Twitter because, as we've covered, there is a Graham K out there who has, who has taken that name uh, and now won't let go of it and has never used Twitter except to one time say he doesn't like Twitter. He logged on when when Facebook would was was like, "What are you doing?" And you, you'd say, "I am on the computer right now." Uh-huh. And it would say like, "Graham is," and you have to fill in the blank. Yeah. Back, I don't know if you're old enough to remember that, kids, but uh, this guy logged onto Twitter and treated it like that. So it says, I'm on the computer right now, is one of his tweets. And his second uh-huh. tweet says, why would I even use Twitter? I don't get the point. Yeah, and then he was, and to, to this guy's credit. 2009. He said that and he left. He's never been back. No. And he's, in some ways, he's my hero. Like, I, I love this other Graham. This other Graham K is so much, uh, yeah. uh, he's just healthier than you are. He's more mentally balanced and stable. He's, he's got commitment. He follows through. Yes. He knows what he likes. He knows oh. what he doesn't like. Oh. Uh, he is, I'm guessing, I don't know this for sure, but able to sustain and maintain erections for long periods of time. Basically, everywhere you fall short, wow. the other Graham K, yeah. uh, it comes up in the clutch. I, I just think I've been taking too many of the pills that, Alpha Cunt pills. That <laughs> too we, many of the pills that we hawk on we this hawk, podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well then you, but that, you know, then you should be My rock hard. My penis has been m- more swollen than hard yes, lately. Yes, turgid. Turgid, yeah. yes. Strong. <laughs> yeah, just infected looking. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a thumb that got hit with a hammer. It's a good look for a penis. Yeah. Though, I think. Yep. 
Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's got a nail on it. Oh, no, that's not a good look no. for a penis. No, okay. you don't want to have a nail. And, well, I guess some people like a, uh, uh, the, what's that called when it's your penis is, is pierced? A Prince Albert? <laughs> yeah. Why is it a Prince Albert? I don't know. I assume, because oh. like if it, maybe if it was a ring, you've kind of got a crown thing going on. Right. I don't know. Maybe Prince Albert. Should be like Prince Richard. That's too on the nose, Dick. I would think. Prince Dick. Prince Dick. Dick Prince. <laughs> yeah. Dick Prince is good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know the, why Prince Albert is what a uh, dick piercing is called, but I know you really, whoever went for that first, it was really going for it, huh? You don't know what's going to happen. No. You're saying, I tell you what, stick a fucking nail through there and a, tell me. A pioneer. Yeah, a true pioneer. Our hats off, hats off to the first man to get a dick piercing. Yeah. This, this week's hero of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got a new segment, guys. I'm looking for an apartment right now. Uh, but looking for apartments in New York is a completely in- insane thing to do. I think if you yeah. live in other places in the country, uh, it's tough to understand how bizarre uh, the New York apartments are. Yeah. Like yeah. layouts like you've never seen anywhere in the world, uh, trying to do the most with the least amount of space imaginable, insane uh, neighbors. And some, it's they're just trying to do the least with the with the space. So they're just chopping it up and chopping it up. and cho- It just... It's so un- like non-functional. Yeah. This the the lady that I saw that showed me these apartments. It would have been a nice open concept, one bedroom maybe. Uh huh. But instead, it was three chopped up, uh, like little rooms, and only one it was a railroad style. Only one room had a window. Yeah. And instead of um, uh, so so the other rooms had light. They left uh like a foot. On the top of the drywall that was open. Gotcha. No window. Right. So basically, all if you had roommates, which who used to live there was probably an Irish family of nineteen. Yeah. Yeah. They just were living in cubicles. Okay. You, yeah. You, between you and your roommate was just a. If the ceiling is eight feet, it was a seven foot high wall. Yes. Well, that's like everything's going that direction anyway. Of like, uh, you know, it's like we work and then we work open, like we live, and uh, so that's it. We're all just meeting cubicles all the time. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. That's your, your life will just be a series of cubicles. If you're lucky enough to like yeah. date in that scenario, you'll go into a we fuck, uh, we fuck. We go into your we fuck, then you yeah. go back to the we work and you go to your, your, um, uh, your Uber driving job. Uh huh. Your, yeah. You you're know. delivering packages for yes. Amazon. Yes. Those are the only jobs left in the world. Yeah. Gig economy. There, there's, I, I, there's two jobs, uh, left in the world or will be. And that's, uh, Amazon package delivery Mm -hmm. or Marvel superhero. (laughs) It's just one or the other. Uh, Those are the options. And you just got to hope you're lucky enough to be one of the Marvel superheroes. And they just keep making more of them at this point. So you got a shot. They really are running. They must be running low of Marvel superheroes at some point. I think they can just kind of make more, you know? I once just looked into it Uh to see how many more there are out there. Yeah. And I found I th- I found uh, I just looked for obscure Marvel characters, yeah. comic book characters, and there was the Killer Bee. Okay, and he just controlled a bunch of bees. <laughs> so he's called the Killer Bee, but he controls the bees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, the, we desperately need that guy right now. Right. To be like, yeah, can we, you get them pollinating flowers or whatever the, they do? We yeah, need them for we, the food chain. Yeah. He just had he had like a dog whistle, uh-huh. and the bees would would he would come. He was like the Pied Piper of bees. So he was just he had a whistle. Yeah, he was like it was like a flute. Yeah. And what was he called? I think the Killer Bee. So this is the thing. This is uh on paper this or is Bee Man, completely or, insane. It's true, and it, he was. And, in, this is a real comic book. And two years from now, there you're gonna see like in a world where there are no bees. <laughs> He stood alone. <laughs> yeah, and we're gonna, and then I'm gonna go see it. I'm gonna go see it, and be like, mm-hmm. I wonder if uh, Robert Downey Jr. is gonna have a cameo in B Man yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, they made Ant Man. It's no better. It's, it's it's truly no better. Yeah, I don't understand Ant Man. That another weird one I saw is true. This is the best one. Is mm-hmm. arm fall off man? Oh, that can't be a real yes. one. His superpower was diabetes. That, was that his arms? He could detach his arms and uh-huh. use them as clubs. So he could take Wait, either how could he arm. Hold, how could he hold an arm? He could only do one at a time. <laughs> it would, he would take one off. And go, uh-huh. I don't. I don't believe this one. I think this one is a lie. I'll Google it right now. You're gonna Google arm fall off, man. Hell yeah. 
It's a real thing. There's 0% chance that arm fall off man is a real thing. What what was even the value? You're worse off having one arm. It's not a good character. Holding another arm to beat someone with. Also, how's you? It's arm fall off boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, yeah, I saw it. Handed, uh, I just handed Robbie. Is a the... hero with the incredible ability to detach his own limbs and use them as blunt weapons. But here's the thing: <laughs> you. You're, you can already use your limbs as blunt weapons yeah. without detaching well, them. Well, you don't have the... There's uh, a whole... There's a sports dedicated to it. There's a whole... Uh, look, you know... You don't have the... The distance? The, the reach? The well, when, you, when, you, when you wield a club, the point yeah. of wielding a club is that there's more force. There's I, more... I will say that like... If leverage, so, If someone, uh, let's call it seven feet away from you, said something annoying, and then you removed an arm and open hand slapped them... Mm-hmm. With the arm that you just removed and are holding, that's it's pretty funny. It seems as though he, he uses the shoulder as the club. It's uh, DC Comics. Oh uh, yeah, but that explains it. Yeah, yeah, it might be why DC DC Comics not doing as well. Yeah, well they had Superman, who is uh, a lot of people love Superman. I hate Superman. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Boring. He's got everything. He's, yeah. he's got absolutely everything. Uh, what's the point? You know, laser eyes is such a, on top of everything. Then you yeah. give him laser eyes. Yeah. And then in the movie, the first one, like something goes wrong and then he just flies backwards around yeah. the world and turns back time. Yeah. There's no consequences for Superman. No. None. Uh, yes, that's a hot take. Uh, yeah. And then Batman is just a rich asshole. Batman's a good one. Batman might be the best one. He's he's not. He's not. <laughs> okay. He's sitting on top. Of, how much money does the, does he have? Do you the think? Wayne Foundation? Yeah. I would imagine him to be like sort of a modern day. Like a Bezos? Elon Musk type, but well, from he, five years ago. Okay. Before Elon Musk was the richest man in the world. Let's say he's got $15 billion, right? Okay. And then he sits in his little uh, cave that he built for himself mm-hmm. and is like, I need to, I got to fix Gotham. There's too, Gotham is, is too much evil in Gotham. And it's like, Take fourteen billion dollars yeah. and invest it in your city. Build yes. a, uh, some light rail. Invest yes. in a community services, some community public center. health. But instead, he's like, "Gonna go out fight people one at a time." Breakfast programs for poor kids. Gonna go out at night punch a homeless guy. Punch these uh, these uh, poor people trying to make a living. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, he's the worst hero. Right, that's true. He's just a rich asshole. And also, he only cares about his city. That's true. Yeah, all that money. Yeah. You can, what about all these people starving over the world? You could save them. Yeah, it's always Gotham. It could be like, Batman, Batman, the Riddler's escaping to Detroit. Not my problem. Yeah. That's Motown. That's not my jurisdiction. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotham is New York, right? Uh, Yeah, it's some version of New York, but it's not New York, you know. It's, it's Gotham. It's New York that's always nighttime and windy. It's always fall in Gotham. Yes, and there's always, like, unfortunately, this might be a, a side... Uh, effect of Batman existing. It's also uh, just crawling with super villains. Yeah, it's a city unlike almost any other city mm-hmm. where a lot of uh, caricature type people are are into organized crime, uh, and there's like dozens of them, and they're very dangerous. They're always. It's not like they're not like a you know. It's not the Lufthansa heist. They're not like how do I steal three million dollars? Right. They're always like I'm gonna explode all the hospitals. I'm everything. I'm gonna make the whole city covered in goo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goo, I say. Yeah, and then Batman has to be like, "That's unacceptable." I don't like. We don't like. I don't like. I don't want goo. goo in my city. I don't want the. I'm gonna do one more lap in my Scrooge McDuck gold <laughs> coin pool, <laughs> and then fix this goo situation. Yeah, uh, hey, it makes sense. It does make sense. Graham, throw your glasses on because we've got a new sponsor today. Yes, we do. It, it's a, another exciting sponsor. Very exciting sponsor. We seem to uh, we're diversifying our portfolio. What's crazy is sifting through all of the emails that mm. we get from companies trying to sponsor us. Yes. They want a taste. They want a piece. Yes. Of of uh, the edge lords. Oh, they want it. And uh, we're going to get to every one of them because we need the money. We're going to do. We are not uh, discerning we, 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 at all. We need. We. We're, 
We're independently wealthy. We I go through every email and I ju- I just respond yes before I read them. <laughs> uh, so we actually we have uh, we're backlogged. We have a lot of ads to do. So wow. let's get to this one. And this one is for uh, a new sponsor. I'm super excited about uh, Domestic Loans International, pioneers of the new reverse reverse mortgage. So listeners out there, do you own a house or not own a house? It doesn't matter because with a new reverse reverse mortgage, the team at Domestic Loans International will take your house, whether you own Mm. one or not, and sell it back to you for profit, whether you buy it or not. It's your money. Liquidity is good, and a reverse reverse mortgage is essentially putting your money in a blender, thus liquefying it. Make your money wet. It's important to move your money around, and Domestic Loans International will transfer your money from your bank to their bank Back to your bank. And all for a nominal fee. Yeah. So sign up now for a free instructional booklet or compact disc. All you pay is shipping, printing, writing, and handling costs. Domestic Loans International. It just makes sense. It sure does, huh? This sounds like a great deal for our listeners. Yes. Get in there. Yes. Let them take your money and then give some money back to you. They move it around. They move the money around. You don't want it stagnant. You want want, uh, liquidity. You want liquidity so you can get all the bitcoins. And sign up for that compact disc. You got to sign up for the compact disc. They'll they'll ship it to you free. Uh, All you have to do is send them some money. That's absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Well, folks, we got a guest coming up. And uh, let's get to our guest. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely excited. I am genuinely excited about this guy. And I've never too. met this man before. Oh, he's the best. I'm ready. All right, I'm ready too. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, we have an amazing guest on the show today. Guest Lord. Welcome, Daddy. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Uh, one of my best friends in comedy and one of the guys who's just always working all the time. You can see him on Black Monday or you can see him on uh, Duncanville or he was uh, on Girls. He wrote for that. He's written for everything and uh, he's a fantastic stand-up comic and just the best dude. Welcome to the show, my friend Yasser Lester. And, and why did you qualify it as, as uh, one of your best friends in comedy? Uh, was, you got you got this cadre of yeah, that's secret true. friends that are better than us. Yeah, I got a lot of friends that like Navy SEALs, so I've got like best friends in in Navy SEAL stuff. I've uh, got yeah. best friends in uh, professional sports. Oh yeah, uh, a lot of friends in the motorboating world. Yeah, uh, so I like to keep everything <laughs> motorboating yeah. separate. That's a cool uh, group. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, sir. Thank you for joining us. So this podcast is about. You know, Graham and I are trying to turn edgy to make money. That's why we got into comedy. We're here for the money. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people think of you as an edgy comic sometimes. Uh, so ah, you're yeah. the edgiest looking guest we've had so far. <laughs> like it, it's between yeah. you and Josh Gondelman. Yes. So, oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't, it depends on what new balances he's wearing that day, but <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, definitely the least edgy shoe, uh, the yeah. new balance, but the most comfortable. Mm. Uh, yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is first we're going to assess uh, just how edgy you are. Yes. And it, it's on a, uh, a scale of, at the end, we're going to give you a rating of one to five kettlebells. And, <laughs> and you want five. Five is good. Five is you want best. as mu- many kettlebells oh, wow. as, you can, as you can get, as you can muster. Wow, yeah. So this is important okay. stuff. So, yeah, we need to know how edgy you are before yep. you can teach us how to be edgy. Yeah. So let's get into it. Edgy lightning round. Uh, you go first, Graham. What is your favorite drug? Ah, I, this is so corny. I'm not really like a drug person, but mm-hmm. when I've experimented, okay. I, you know, like, uh, I love like a good, like Vicodin painkiller, like something like Ooh, yeah. that, that the way people describe, cause I don't smoke weed, but the way people describe weed is how Vicodin actually makes me feel. Whereas like weed just makes me feel terrible. Yeah, yeah, I can right. see that. Do you get like paranoid or? Yeah, I like, I like, I feel like people are like they have stages where they're like, I smoke now, I'm chilling. Now I'm right. high. Now I'm hungry. Now I'm chilling and high yeah. and hungry. <laughs> so like cool. I literally like I smoke. I'm scared. I fall asleep. Like, yeah, there's, like, there's scared <laughs> no, sleep. I don't. Yeah, yeah. pretty like, edgy. Yeah. <laughs> 
just a, ah. Well, yeah. look, you know, you know that Vicodin is probably better because that's the only name it goes by. It's just Vicodin. Yeah, there's, there's no like, yo, you got to try yeah. this banana yeah. crush Vicodin. Yeah, yeah. you know, Vix. <laughs> it's just Vicodin. It sells yeah, yeah. itself every yeah. time, every single time. Yeah. Old like, dirty, yeah. dirty, Vic, dirty yeah. Vic. Yeah. yeah. Yo, you want this Hawaii gold or a Vicodin? That Vicodin. <laughs> I have yeah. a Vicodin, please. <laughs> Absolute medicine, please. <laughs> All uh, right. Uh, those, that's a downer. It is a downer. Yeah. yeah. Your right. favorite cigarette brand? Oh, uh, Marlboro Light. Okay, classic. Wow, right, nice off, right off the cuff. You American. Know. I like I was it. A, well, I was, a, I was a smoker for years, and like this is this is like fake Edge Lord stuff. But I tried smoking Camel Lights for years because. Paul Thomas Anderson said they were his favorite nice. cigarette oh, in an yeah. interview. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm 18. And I, yeah. This makes sense. I literally, keep in mind, I was working at a used bookstore just like housing Hell yeah. Camel lights, yes. trying to like be cool and just literally getting sick every single day. <laughs> yeah. like, What's the problem? What's the problem? Yeah. So I was like, oh, I can't, my, my frail body physically cannot handle this. So, then I, you know, I tried parliaments because everyone like, because I'm, you know, like Robbie, I'm a dirty South boy. And What's parliaments, up? you know, that recessed filter, everyone tried to make you feel like that was, that was. <laughs> but uh, you can put your, you, know. you can put drugs in there. Yeah, but not me. No, that's right. You know, I was just, I was just sticking dry Kool Aid up there. Hell yeah, <laughs> but that brings you back up after the downers. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get back up, even out. Yeah. You gotta even out. Um, um, but yeah, Marlboro Light. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, Doing well so far, I would say. Pretty good. Yeah. You're on your way. Um, it's getting heavy. Uh, favorite liquor? Uh, again, stopped drinking like seven years ago, seven or eight years ago. But when well, I drink... you should start again so you can answer this question. <laughs> okay. Well, here's, I actually do have an answer, but like, okay, here we go. I'm going to give two answers. Okay. Sorry. Uh... Do you mean liquor or alcoholic drink? Alcoholic drink. Okay. My favorite, and this is disgusting, uh-huh. is a room temperature beer. Oh, gross. I it's very hate cold beer. English of you. It. You would yeah. oh, should like they serve it at room temperature? Yeah. Yeah, in England because it's oh. cask ale. It's not yeah. refrigerated. So Yeah, it's not sure. bubbly. Yeah. Uh, but okay. not drinking anymore because you used to drink too much. Super edgy. That's pretty edgy. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good edgy spin on it. It is. It's yeah. like I, do, I, I, par- I I drunkenly drove into a parked car and then drove off. That see, helps. it's pretty edgy. That does pretty help. Edgy. Pretty edgy. Was that? A- I'm loading on another kettlebell as we speak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, don't worry. I drink for another seven years. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta. <laughs> okay. You gotta make sure. Well, at least we're yeah. past if you, the if statute. You, if you guys thought that was gonna be some sort of wake up call, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, second answer, again, gross is uh, there used to be I, I don't know if they make it anymore a toasted marshmallow flavored Smirnoff. Oh my god! Oh, no, <laughs> not edgy. I just took away a kettlebell. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh. It was just good. Like it was like a good sipping drink. Like you don't. Yeah. Like, no, I used to like... dip uh, graham crackers into it, and I call it s'mores. I was getting <laughs> fucked up on s'mores. And I used to just order it and just just ram it up my <laughs> pussy. <laughs> that's one way. Yeah. You, the alcohol hey, gets hey, in faster. It. Yeah. All that's right. <laughs> We're taking a serious turn here. Favorite white rapper. Oh. There can only be ah. one. Wow, that actually is – that's hard because, like, on talent, mm-hmm. you know, you should go Eminem, right? Yep. Just because, like, he probably is the most talented. But I'll say I, like, on swag, okay. I actually love Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's dating that babe right yes. now, isn't he dating yeah. ba- some sort of a babe? Ma- Machine Gun Kelly yeah. did that super annoying thing of getting your come up on rap. And, and then becoming then a white just guy. Again. Becoming a white guy. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it yeah. did the thing. And so he loses points for that and yeah. the way he got embarrassed by Eminem uh, yeah. a couple years back. Now he plays, uh, the, he plays the type of music that we play for our intro, right? No, it's like it's Blink 182. Travis yeah, Barker is writing and producing it and he's oh, just yuck. plugged in Machine Gun Kelly. I'm not going to lie. I dig the album too. But okay. it's hard because like there are like, 
It's like, do we call Logic one because he's a mulatto? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's half white rapper. He doesn't. Yeah, yeah. no. Uh, I had to teach my mom that that was a bad word like two years ago. Mulatto? Yeah. Yeah. We- oh, I do the opposite. I encourage people to use <laughs> people it. Just yeah. say it. I say mul- like that. And I'm like, you need to call people mulattoes and wiggers again. Yeah, like those 100%. Are, yeah. There's some words that just sound so racist. Mulatto sounds right. The other one is the word for one eighth black is the most racist sounding. Was it octoroon? Octoroon. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh, check like out that this. Ru- that rune part is <laughs> not good. Check out this fucking <laughs> octoroon over here. But it's also like the second term uh, regarding a black person that has a double O in it. Because you have coon yes. and octoroon. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, did we lock? I feel like we get the lock on double O slurs. For sure. Yeah. I am oh, no, sure. No, Asians actually. Asians. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, they got yeah. a few of those as well. I know one yeah. eight, when you go into one eighth, it's like you... You really got problems when you really yeah. care. About, like, <laughs> yeah, you're trying to keep tabs on everybody. Yeah, that yeah. was. I think that was the Nazi rule. It was like one eighth Jewish and you're dead. But if you're one sixteenth, you're good to go. Mm. Yeah, there was a rhyme for oh. it for Jews in Nazi Germany. <laughs> I guarantee there probably yeah. was a rhyme. Uh, probably, yeah. Probably didn't rhyme though. Uh, oh, well, it would have yeah. been in German. Yeah. Uh, all right, you're up. I, okay. I oh. will say though, it feels like that was probably a Jewish thing more than a Nazi thing. Like some Jewish guy was like, Hey, I'm only yeah, I'm, uh, I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let me Is check it? the books here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, crunching some numbers. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. my 132nd yeah. Jewish. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't even know why I'm talking my, like this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are uh, mannerisms. I, 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 I picked up to fit in. <laughs> I, um, Okay. Uh, now this is this is a a, a cop. This is this is a question that we wrote out. We I wrote out before your image appeared on my screen. Okay. Um, what is your favorite tattoo? And you have to have a tattoo, but that's not an issue. Okay. Um. Uh, and you can say why. That might help. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I'll say two, just because it's kind of corny. Blah blah blah. But. I have like a memorial tattoo for my grandma on my right side. And then when my mom uh, uh, beat cancer, I got a tattoo on my left side for her. And Any jokes crazy. about that, Graham? Yeah. When you look <laughs> Any at the, funny takes? When you look at the tattoo of your, of your uh, dead grandma, does it remind you of her being dead? We're cutting that. That part's cut. <laughs> uh, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I get it, and I just go, oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> shit. Ah, <laughs> man, I should have done it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, well, I'm I, sorry I, about your your grandma. I realize I'm, I'm happy know. for your mom. I forgot yeah, to. No, absolutely. I forgot to play our our edgy lightning round intro. So I'm gonna I'm gonna save this moment with this moment right here. Edgy, edgy light, lightning round. <laughs> It's electric. <laughs> okay, we're back. <laughs> and we are back. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, uh, this is another important one. Uh, who would you rather fuck? Uh, Amy Cooper Barrett, uh, who famously called the police on Chris Cooper, uh, or Maya Ponsetto, the daddy girl hat. So that, or the daddy uh, hat girl. The bird, yeah, wa- yeah. The anti- the the bird-, bird watching lady? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the cell phone. Girl. Yeah. Um, Here is the truth is that Amy Cooper Barrett was thicker. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would go as far to say that I think she secretly likes black dude. Okay. I think sexually girl is actually, yeah, I think she, the Maya girl is disgusted. By the, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I think, I think had Christian Cooper just been hitting on her, he would have and not been gay. Clearly. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. he would have smashed that. So like, you oh. think there's a chance she picked up on the fact that he was gay and was like, he's not going to smash. I'm going to call the cops on him. Fuck this guy. I think she picked up that he because he was because he's gay. There's no reason for him to be even remotely nice. Right. I'm sure he was nice. Uh-huh. Yeah. But like he doesn't have to do the polite thing that all guys do. Right. It's like, oh, maybe. You know what I mean? Like because it's not his vibe. Yeah. So I think because I think had he been straight, he would have asked probably a different way yeah put some sugar and on he it uh, right yeah he also he wouldn't have been, been bird watching he night. also wouldn't have been bird right. watching. Uh, <laughs> uh. Yeah. you know that old uh, uh. that old trope all bird watchers are gay <laughs> I, yeah, yeah i don't yeah. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, Amy Cooper Barrett for sure. And I'd still be like, you can call the cops after. I don't care. But, yeah. You're gonna want to call the cops after. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a crime. It's gonna up be. Here. <laughs> I brought chalk. Well, if I can't fuck you, <laughs> if I can't fuck you, I'll choke my own dog <laughs> and call the police. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's my answer. All right. What's uh? Yes, yeah, sir. What's your favorite way to shred your bod? Oh, uh, <laughs> I mean, I was well, I was working out like an hour ago. Wow. So like, I try to do a mix of like strength training five days a week and then cardio four days a week. Um, but I do like a full body. I usually do a full. I, I do a full body. That's eight. Just upper body. It's nine full days. Full body, upper body. You do cardio and and cardio and weights on the same day oh. sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's serious. I thought, yeah. you, I thought you had a nine day week. Hmm. <laughs> uh, right. You don't have to laugh at that. Um, <laughs> it was that was just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's my brand. That's super edgy yeah. to just not even go by yeah. a regular calendar mm. to to make yeah, up a, a new calendar <laughs> around your workout schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's Shredtober. <laughs> Shred. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's nine oh days a week god. in Shredtober. Uh, oh my god! Wait, keep ask the next question, but that actually does remind me of a shirt that I saw in public that I, I have to show you. Okay, um, no. I'm gonna show you over Zoom, but keep going. Please do, and we'll uh, yeah, we can we can drop the shirt into the video. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite theme park to finger a chicken or get fingered? We're not here to judge. Um, man, that's actually. Here's the thing. I feel like realistically, Six Flags is like that's man. Yeah, yeah. Either on either side. That's actually the correct answer. Yeah, you know, you're not, you're not. I say you're not fingering at Disneyland. You're not fingering. We're gonna finger at Harry Potter. Like actually, oh. but Harry Potter people are like weird sex freaks. Is that so, true? Oh yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. They're like they're disgusting monsters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so I feel like for them, that's probably the most appropriate. Yeah. But for me, uh, I would say that uh, I would do six likes. Okay, look, I found the picture. Okay. Hopefully it shows up on Zoom. Uh, it literally says, United we squat, squat Tober. <laughs> wow. I, would add, I swear to God, I was... Just at Starbucks, and that like guy walked right in front of me, and yeah. I was like, I almost just asked him if I could take the picture. Also, it has like a mustache, like I guess that's like a yeah. November, but that's November. I like right? that his backhand. He's actually covering up his ass, which must be fantastic if he yeah. celebrates Squattober. Well, well, it's only good for a month. Full, that's true. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the full shirt because it says United We Squat Squattober. Then it just says the world's largest knee bending party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that is a cool shirt. Uh, it's a, it's except, like, just the idea of like being like, I well, I gotta buy this shirt. Yeah, and the fact <laughs> is, we all know that that the world's largest knee bending party was backstage at a Poison concert in 1987. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to go. Oh, hey, hey, hey! Or the Republican Party under Trump? <laughs> Am, yeah, I right? <laughs> Am I right? Am I right, guys? <laughs> I'm going to say it. Uh, uh, yeah, and that was like that Eminem freestyle in the garage. Uh, <laughs> that was when I that was when I was just done done with him as a as a rapper and a person. Uh, I didn't get I it. Liked it. I liked I liked that he was just huffing and puffing his way. <laughs> just really <through> freestyle. <laughs> you think you the president? You really just a resident? Oh, that or, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Whatever, whatever. He uh, said. I, I, everyone just collectively were all like, "Oh, you are white." Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's showing. Your white is showing. Um, <laughs> but uh, all right, Graham, you're up. I think. What is who? Who do you prefer, Ryan Seacrest? Or Carson Daly. Man, uh, take your time. Here's the thing. No, it's no, an no, edgy I mean, question. It's an edgy question. You might get canceled if you answer it wrong. Which is truly my dream. Mm. <laughs> uh, me and Carson Daly have the same birthday. Oh, okay. So that you know, that there's a bond there. Yep. But different I've year. No doubt. Different year, 
But then I was reading an interview once with Ryan Seacrest, and he was talking about how he was like chubby growing up. I wasn't, but it, this was like weirdly endearing and then made a dark turn. Where he was talking about how he was chubby growing up, and he got sick of people making fun of him. So for like two years, all he would do is eat two apples a day. Like he would eat two apples. <laughs> My friend did that, and, and he got skinny. Anyway, so, go on. Well, no, it was funny because he was like talking about it, and the person interviewing him was like, "That is an eating disorder." Yeah, and he's like, "Nah, nah, man, I was just eating apples." <laughs> <laughs> And it made me like him so much to realize, like, A, that, like, he's just a dude who fully admitted to having an eating disorder. Yeah. And, and he, like, fully, and, and he, like, fully admitted to, like, yeah. the nation. So I was like, oh, that means, like, he's dumb enough to be friends with me. And, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. that made me like him. <laughs> so I actually, and... If, like, you're going, like, lightning round, like, they're both pretty annoying. Who has more money? Ryan Seacrest. By, I, by a long I'll, way. Go with, I'll go with Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he just spends it all on apples. He's just got pantries <laughs> filled with apples. Seacrest is the one with the apple eating disorder? Or Daly? Yeah. No, Seacrest. No, Seacrest. Wow. Yeah. Well, he looks great. Carson Daly doesn't have the discipline for that. Carson Daly, I yeah, tell you what, also, doesn't have an eating disorder. That guy is, yeah. he's, yeah, he's, he's eating he's, enough. He's, yeah, he's, he, come, he came a little puffy boy over mm-hmm. the few years. He looks like what he is, just a 45-year-old man, just a 45-year-old dad with a job. It's also just like, dude, that like he has that like, at least <clears throat> Ryan Seacrest has the the sheen of like a Hollywood like mogul, whether you like him or think he's corny or not. Yeah, Carson Daly's vibe is like, Huntington Beach, Orange County, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, like, like famous stars and straps T-shirts and long dicky shorts. It's like, right. dude, like, get yeah. away from me. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like watching Ryan Seacrest pretend to be excited for people on American Idol feels so much more natural yeah. than watching Carson Daly cheer for some fifteen-year-old girl on The Voice. Yeah. It's like you don't <laughs> want to be doing this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah. Okay, Seacrest. back to some real edgy shit though. Favorite yeah, yeah, yeah. sex position oh yeah oh uh there are three I, to choose from well i was gonna say i think real is like every time i like because here's the thing you want to like give some like crazy answer where people would be like "Ooh," mm-hmm. but it's like dude 69 is just the illest thing on earth so oh that's a rare answer really? that is yeah. a rare answer Really? Yeah. I feel like it's like you get all the things in the face. That yeah, yeah. No, like. I'm, look, I'm on board. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. Uh, I but, feel like it's a bummer for women, but for guys, it's incredible. Yeah, I think that. <laughs> I, th- I think that's just life. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, that that's okay. My answer. I like yeah. it. I think that's yeah. that's pretty edgy. Uh, yeah. Piggybacking off of that, um, what's your favorite all time babe? Could be a guy or a girl. Salma Hayek. That's my Same answer, here. too. That's my answer. That's everyone's answer, really? right? She's yes. such a she's goddamn the best. babe. Yeah. She's the best. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I texted. I like, yeah, go ahead. Right. I, I legit, I texted Yasser like two weeks because I saw that she's like about to turn 55 or whatever. And 55. I, yeah, and I felt like it was a thing I couldn't tweet because it was too, uh, it's just not my, my, my Twitter personality. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, Salma Hayek is turning uh, 55 this year, which makes her eligible for early bird seating on my face. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> That's I so truly, cool. And it's Thanks, like, bro. That's no so dis- cool. Like, literally no disrespect to my re- relationship, but, but I've told Chelsea plenty of times. Like, I'm like, there's a world where... Like Salma Hayek can just walk in the room and kill me, and that would be just as good as having sex. That's with me. the best way to go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. She is, she is like, I mean, she's so hot that it. she just did Marin's podcast, and I almost listened to it. You know? <laughs> 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 oh god! Yeah. So no okay. question. Uh, who would you rather fight, Lakeith Stanfield or Nick Cannon? Uh. Lakeith Stanfield. Okay. What well, for what for what's your reasoning? Um yeah, first of all, Nick Cannon's swole. He I is yeah. talk about that. He's like <laughs> dangerously swole. And like he's very disciplined. Like he's like disciplined yeah. in like everything that he does. Uh and I feel like he also has something to prove. 
like people are just like Nick Cannon's like a cornball, blah blah blah. And it's just like I feel like it's one of those things that was like if I said it, he would like <laughs> me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah. also like I, 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 you know, I, I know enough people that know him, and I just think that like he's probably like I know he's like a boxer and all that stuff. Yeah. And like Lakeith, like, and it's like I don't know him. Yeah, you know, and I have nothing against him. We, you know, like I, if it, like he's, you know, like he's Keith? actually very close to someone I know. And, but like, a, I feel like we're about the same build, we're about the same height and stuff. And it's like I would rather take my chances. Yes, that there's also a chance that he would be like, no, nah, brother, like fight, fighting's not the way. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Weird, you know. And that's exactly when you could fuck him up. You know? Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah Lakeith, yeah. yeah, he seems like a true artist type to me, and their yeah. no- artists are notoriously easy to uh, kick the shit out of. Right. I, I uh, don't he know. He's from, like, North Carolina. Oh, uh, yeah. He's also, like, is he, like, he's, you know, is he, he secretly, like us, yeah. Like, a, you know, a secret southern scrapper from the mud, like us. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, like, um, I know the type, yeah. 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 He right. sounds, yeah, I don't know who Lakeith Stanfield is. That he's, checks out. That sounds right yeah. to me. Uh, but it sounds like he sa- his name sounds less tough. Yeah. Well, Nick Cannon's got Cannon right in his name. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. But he also has, but he has Nick. That's true. It's like if you're going, if you're going Nick versus Lakeith, I don't want to fight Lakeith. Oh, that's true. But if true. you're going Cannon versus Stanfield, yes. I don't want to fight Cannon. This is true. Lakeith so, Cannon sounds tough. Yeah, we'd all kick yeah. the shit out of Nick Stanfield. Nick Stanfield <laughs> is getting his ass. <laughs> <Nick Stanfield's fun. laughs> He's not making it to well, the fight. Oh, guys, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. I, <laughs> his <laughs> peanut allergy takes him out way before the fight. Oh, wait. Oh, but, but I brought everyone sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Someone grabbed Stanfield. Stanfield way. <laughs> EpiPen. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. All right, you're doing great. We just have a couple more edgy lightning round questions. Graham, all right, let's do it. Uh, how many chicks have you slayed? Oh, man, I can't. <laughs> I, come on. <laughs> slayed could mean anything. No, that's true. Slayed could... I, I objectively uh-huh. cannot get in. in <laughs> because I don't know what numbers I put out there. And I don't want that number. <laughs> yeah. Well, the truth is the edgiest answer is I can't tell you. Yeah. That's the edgiest answer <laughs> yep. for sure. Yeah. It should be because you've lost count, but for personal, whatever you want to do it, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Uh, all you right. You don't want anyone to think you're weird. But while we're on the subject, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Favorite euphemism for sex. Oh man. There's so many good ones. Like I like, I don't know. There's like the traditional ones like smashing or mm-hmm. whatever, right? Doing it. I feel like just objectively, it'll always be funny and violent is blowing someone's back out. Like, <laughs> blowing someone's back out, like, always funny. But like I, 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 one of our friends, it might have been Rel, I want to say, but like literally said he blew a girl's back into dust. I was like, <laughs> God! <laughs> it's so aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just funny every time. And it's like, I, I, you know, I, I'm a, I know I'm on the edge lord, so I'm trying not to do the woke thing. Uh-huh. But it's like, it is so funny to me. Just like any idea. Like, there's probably four dudes in history who have really laid it down so hard. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But the rest and of none us of are them said literally... So. Yeah, the yeah. rest of us are just talking. Yes. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? That's like, the funniest thing about sex in general. It's like all the confidence that men have to put out there if you're like sexting or whatever, and then it's always just <laughs> embarrassing flailing. You yeah, know? yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guarantee I, uh, whatever woman, whatever woman that was talked about in that way was just when she told her friend, she wasn't like, yeah, yeah, he fucked me so hard. My just he fucked me into dust. Yeah. <laughs> but I God, I liked this. it. <laughs> but I'll say this. Like, I would I, I think for a year, men shouldn't have to pump at all. Like, there should be a year where women literally have to do everything sexual. Like, they have to be on top. They why? Have to like- I like this plan. I don't even because, need to know why. <laughs> because, like, all of our, you know, fake charisma, or all of our fake confidence comes from the idea that we have to do so much uh-huh. that, like, it's like Robbie said, it's like you have to text and be like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. It's always a guy being like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. It, you have to 
prove how much you're going to do just to get in there. Then when you're in there, you have to at least meet that expectation or they're literally going to be like, his dick is the size of a penny. Like, it doesn't matter how <laughs> big it actually is. It's bad a in penny. bed. It just makes your dick metaphorically <laughs> yeah. tiny, right? So it's like, make women for a year uh-huh. actually bang the way guys have to like bang it out. And then let's see how impressive they are. Like, how many times, like, because guys basically were just being like, that girl's incredible. And it's like, how so? And it's like, well, I had an orgasm. It's like, <laughs> okay, but like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, like, how many times have you been like that? Whoa, whoa, you know what I mean? And so that's where I think that, like, for a year, women should just, like, we, we as men should lay on our backs. Yep. This is men's rights. I'm here rights. for I'm here for men's rights. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That should be a new segment on our podcast. Men's right corner. <laughs> men's rights corner. Uh yeah, no, I uh also I feel like look, the way sex works, it only makes sense they would do more because the whole time, the entire time a man is having sex, he's trying not to orgasm. And the entire right. time a woman is having sex, she's trying to orgasm. So it right. seems like I, you kind of got to put the work in here. It's going to happen for me right. regardless of what happens right. here. Exactly. If she does too good of a job, uh huh, you might orgasm, though. And, and I will. No, I'm guaranteed but to. too There's early. No, and I will do it too early for but sure. That's, that, Graham, that's okay because isn't the other thing that we constantly hear is like, oh, he, you know, like he finished so early. And it's like, again, like, and I know people said it's like that's a compliment to you, right? Or like, you know, I feel like there's so many times that you're trying to, you know, make sure a woman has, you know, X amount of orgasm so she doesn't tell her friends that you're like the biggest loser she's ever met in her life. So like now it's like, hey, I had no orgasm. Get off me. Like this is this is your new life for now. Like go <laughs> over in the corner. Corner. This is by yourself. <laughs> yeah. There's a stand in a corner. <laughs> Now you have a girlfriend, and right? Finish themselves off. Yes, I did. Have you uh, uh, broached this to her? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, no. This is going to take a global uh, effort of men unionizing. Right. Yeah. No. yeah, truly. I, and like, here's the thing. And it's like, I hope this podcast is big enough that, like, we, you know, it becomes like. Uh, God, what's the Greek tragedy that Chirac is based off of? Where oh, uh, pull sex from their men? yeah, I, I know the one you're talking about, but I don't, I have no idea what it's called. Yeah. But what, is, the women stop having reverse. sex, so the men stop going yeah. to war or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. This is our reverse. Or our like, reverse Chirac. You know, yeah. Yeah. You know what, you guys? Because here's the other thing. And like, this is Edgelord stuff for a minute. If you like get on Twitter right now, 90% of female comics twitter feeds have just been i hate men this date has been all like it's gotten so it's like so boring at this point i'm like then stop dating us i mean and this is something i've said to my girlfriend like stop if we are this awful right like it would be like i I don't know oj simpson just constantly bashing white women it's like (laughs) stop being with them yeah famous for you know being in interracial relationships but like you don't oj was actually technically constantly bashing a white woman (laughs) he was yeah (laughs) (laughs) before i get technical very true Mm -hmm. i just i I get i get so sick of all of it right it's just like it's all the woke like Mm -hmm. women hate men and then it's like all these little corny black comics like they found their voice by being like white people get it together and it's like White people know to get it together. And, like, you just happen to not be funny, and this is the lane you found. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's very, it's just very annoying to me. But, uh, anyway, yeah. Whatever. Right, we're going the opposite way. We happen to not be funny, and we're going the edgy route yeah. to cover for it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. We're doing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're doing the same thing in reverse. We're trying to dumb it down to get followers. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, it's going to work. I'd uh, say skip. Let's just go, go, go right to the last one. Close this baby out. I, I All right. Okay, uh, last one. Name a car as sick as the 1998 Pontiac Firebird, i.e. every straight guy's dream wow. car. Yeah. Uh, 
Are we talking the Pontiac Firebird from '98? Did that have the flared hood? Like, yeah. did it have the nostrils in the yes, hood? Yes, it did. Yep. Wow, sure wow. did. What a See, man! What an wow. edge lord! Yeah, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a real man. Come on! Come oh on. my! Yeah, don't don't play games. With God! Uh, <laughs> wow, I would say wow. Does it need to be a sports car? No, whatever. You're like basically your dream car. Is, yeah. My dream. Well, here's the thing. Like, I think that the equivalent, and granted, I also had one for a long time, but is a 1994 Ford Bronco XLT, Eddie Bauer edition, big tires, chrome trim outside of the two tone. Like, another shout out to OJ Simpson. Another shout out to OJ yeah. Simpson. Something yeah. like that. If you're not going to go fast, yeah. You got to go strong. And those Broncos are so strong. Like it was like it, it was the they took just the front end of an F-150 and then just cut off the back and made it an SUV. They're so ill and to this day. Like I think that Ford bringing back the Bronco and making it look what it looks like. Which yeah. Is like a bad Toyota FJ Cruiser is like the biggest mistake. All right. Well, we got a score to tally up here on. Yeah. Okay. So through his edgy lightning round. Uh, between one and five kettlebells. Uh, I liked what was going on with the, with the cigarettes there. Yeah, it was good off the top. Uh, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Uh, drug of choice, Vicodin, painkillers, very edgy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah downers, I, downers. Machine Gun Kelly, I didn't see that coming as a no, choice, and I no. like it. <laughs> uh, I might be more of a Macklemore fella, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, working out nine days a week. Wow, pretty impressive. nine days a week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was pretty good. I'm going to be honest. Uh, if, if I'm adding that all up, Yep. I'm coming in at five kettlebells. Yeah, let me just look at mine. Right tabulating. Yeah, uh, slayed a bunch of chicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going with five. We're going five, five kettlebells. Five kettlebells. Wow, full, yeah. right. full edgelord wow. status. Uh, uh, so, I feel like I should have gotten more. Uh, you bonus kettlebells, huh? You well, want bonus? Still, yeah. There's still I some mean, podcasts left. You give a man right. a kettlebell. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you, five, is the, five is the top. But uh, okay. we, ha- we haven't, we'll see, you know. Okay. Yeah, we can't throw in another kettlebell, but maybe a resistance band. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, we as can. A, we can do that. As a little you. extra. Yeah. Uh, You're the leader now with the extra resistance band. All right. Uh, Gondelman had four what and if, a half what kettlebells. If, what if I shaved my pubes into the tap out logo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. In that case. Holy seven fucking kettle- shit. Yeah. Can I, if I do that, can I come back on and then you guys give me? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, there is no question. Yeah. That yeah. will happen. And I will, we will yes. send you right. seven actual kettlebells. Yes. And, and the shipping <laughs> on that expensive. will be fucking insane. Yes. We sh- we'll ship them from here for no reason. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Okay, well, look, we know you're edgy. That's been decided. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we ran the numbers. Uh, so every week we put together some uh, scalding hot takes uh, that we like to run by our edgy guests. If you have any scalding hot takes of your own, you're welcome to join in on this. Uh, oh, man. But, uh, Wait, what are, what are y'all's first? Well. Scalding hot takes. Burn me, Daddy. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, we got some scalding hot takes for you. Uh, well, here's I've got uh, I've got one. Here go we first. go. Uh, although there, this one isn't really a, a, a topic of conversation springboard, but I think if HBO uh, is going to air this one sided uh, Woody Allen documentary, mm. then they also have to produce his sitcom Eight Simple Rules for Fucking My Chinese Daughter. <laughs> That's 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 uh you're right. That's just are, right. It just seems I, fair. He wrote it. He's <laughs> produced it. Amazon is oh, he produced making it. stuff. You know, he he did produce yeah. it. They have kids, don't they? He has kids with his kid. I don't. I don't quite I know. Actually, does. I don't know. Yep. Um, that's cool. It's <laughs> pretty. It's pretty cool. Mine's a more of a hot. It's more of a hot. Okay. Hot yep. Take rant. It's a. Uh, it's snow. It's been snowing here every day in New York City, and I'm from Canada. And uh, I get a lot of Americans come up to me and they say, they, they complain, they go, man, I'm freezing out here. And then I look down and uh, I'm always looking down on them and they, they have jackets that are open. Uh huh. It's the craziest phenomenon you will, you'll never see in Canada. Someone go, I'm freezing with a wide open jacket. Uh huh. What the fuck is that? Close your, you get to close your jacket. So this is you'll what, be less cold if your jacket isn't open. 
this is what you don't, as a Canadian, you don't understand about Americanism. It's it's bravado. It's like, look at me. How cold is it? I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to zip up this jacket. It's funny. Yeah. You're like Russians, but you complain. <laughs> yes. Americans yeah. are like uh, complaining Russians. Yeah. Well, but how are people going to see your shirt of Ted Dillon wearing an Alex Jones shirt? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fucking edgy. That's super yeah, edgy. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that is sort of a Russian, an American conservative, that's a, just an American Russian doll. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tim Dillon wearing a shirt of Alex Jones. Uh-huh. Alex Jones wearing a like shirt a Rush of, uh, with Ben shirt. Shapiro yeah, on it. Yeah. yeah. Man. Uh, yeah. All right. Here's another. Here's a, here's a scalding wearing, hot take. W- wearing, a Mar- wearing a Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, all right. Here's a, here's a scalding hot take that I think you might have some opinions on. Okay. Uh, there's uh, you always see these, uh, you know, people are always fighting for, for new things. And one of the things you see a lot now is, uh, People hate like when models are used to model clothing, like models on billboards. They're setting unrealistic beauty expectations. Uh, actors and actresses on shows are, are setting unrealistic beauty expectations. And I think uh, that that's what I want on TV. I don't think ugly people should be allowed on TV and billboards, period. I, yeah. can I, absolutely. And like, I, I gotta say, like, it's part of this bigger problem that like and this is this is gonna be good this, this is gonna get me in trouble yeah. probably <laughs> yeah. but every interview i read now where someone's got it in like a new tv show or a book deal or whatever they go you know i i didn't see someone who looked like me on that screen mm-hmm. and i decided to do something about it i just i didn't <laughs> see someone and i every time someone says that i'm like you're lying you're lying <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah every yeah. <laughs> person has been on screen and like yeah. I, I i'm not saying that to be funny or cute i mean if you ch- like you can go back to any person that said that in the past five years like you can pick any white person any black person any asian person latinx indian middle eastern uh handicapped of some sort like every single kind of person has been represented yeah now, whether you loved it or not is different. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like, there's so many people being like, I like, I I saw something the other day, and like, I'll you know, I'll I'll keep their names out. But it was a round table of like, you know, it was like some black people, some white people, blah blah blah, some gay people, and they all said it. And then they were like, the the moderator was like, well, what shows did you watch growing up? And then they all named a show that had the exact kind of person. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. I, when people do that, it's like, it's so crazy to me. People are like, I don't see someone that, that looks like me. I'm like, dude, my so-called life literally had a gay Latinx high schooler. Like, yeah. that is the most specific thing <laughs> I can think of. You know what I mean? Like, no life goes on had a Down syndrome actor. Living single was Four black women yeah. just chilling, doing their thing. Martin, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, granted, there were more, like, and that's the crazier thing to me, is, like, there were more shows that were representative of people back then right. than there are now. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. It is yeah. literally impossible. So it's like, dude, I know, like, it's it's amazing that so many people have accomplished these things, but, like, stop saying that as the reason that you got into it and, like, looking for, like, a woke answer because it is driving me absolutely yeah. insane. It is driving me crazy. And so that's, anyway. I so want I'm, I want John Hamm to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I did this so there'd be somebody like me Someone out like there. Someone like me out there. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, well, I, I would say growing up, I never felt like represented by what I watched on TV mm-hmm. until, uh, Urkel turned into Stefan. And mm-hmm. then I was like, <laughs> see, finally, yeah, finally this a is guy me. like me. Cause I was watching before and I'm like, I'm, I'm nothing like this fucking nerd. No. Uh, and then he took that potion. I'm like, see, finally a guy with a big old D who knows is, how to use it. Exactly. Like me. <laughs> guys, 11 year old Robbie Slowick. Blow out. <laughs> Blow out some backs. Yeah, to uh, dust. <laughs> and that's good. Oh, my God. Grinding them to dust is good. Uh, yeah. Do you have another scalding hot take for us? Oh, 
Boy, oh boy, uh, do I ever. I am, I'm getting up there, and people are always like, it's never too late. I'm like, I, I, I think there's a point when it is too late. I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. Like, it's almost too late for me to start anything new. Yeah. I think, like, when is it, it when, like, when you have, what if, what do you have Alzheimer's? Because you're old. Is that, is that probably too late, right? You can't start culinary school. I know if you that, can't remember your wife. Yeah, no, sometimes I've seen like if you see someone in their 40s reading like investment for dummies or something, yeah, it's yeah. like invest in cyanide. It's over. Yeah. You know, it's done for you. <laughs> yeah. It didn't happen. Move on. So I felt that was a particularly hot take that I had. Yeah. Uh, yeah and no. Right. 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 No, you're right. <laughs> it, it, here's the thing. Here's, here's why I take off some of the heat just a little bit. Because... You didn't tell someone specifically. Right. Like, Shit. You have to go after. Like, I mm-hmm. feel like had you prefaced it with, like, if you are 45, stop. Yep. If you got to pick a specific age. That's why we got him on. That's why. Yep. That's, yeah. This is what yeah. we're doing. We're learning how to be edgy This is here. good. This is good. Uh, hmm. um, I have one. Okay. Can I just say it real Yeah, quick? absolutely. Oh, okay. Please. Um, This is like, this, and me and Robbie have talked about this. Graham, now we're going to, you know, we're going to be talking a lot more in real life but this idea that like someone will get online and name a very specific thing and be like we don't talk about this enough is driving (laughs) me crazy yeah so they'll be like we need to normalize talking to men or it doesn't have to be that because i don't Mm want to sound like an idiot but it's just like well we need to normalize about how you can kiss your mom on the back of the neck softly overnight. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. And it's like, what? That is like, I have to now join you in that and be like, you know what? Yeah, retweet. It's like, what are we doing? Like, stop picking the weird thing that you do. Yeah. That only you do, and then making it a bigger cause. I saw a girl. I've actually seen two things. I saw one woman say. Uh, we need to normalize what it's like to be a super talented child. And because of that, <laughs> it's harder for you as an adult because you don't know which lane to choose. <laughs> and it becomes harder in life because you keep bouncing around from interest to interest. And I was like, we don't need to talk about we that. Absolutely we absolutely don't. Absolutely don't. Then I saw another person talk about what it was like. It was some dude being like, well, we need to talk about what it's like to be uh, successful, uh, have come from a successful family when you're black and you're young and how being called bougie can be a slur just as bad as being <laughs> called broke or looking <laughs> poor. And I was like, that is not a problem. That is, it is not a struggle. Yeah, I think yeah. it's quite a bit of privilege to even yeah. think that it's yeah. the same. But that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like, that's so crazy. But then you go under the tweets and people are like, Preach. Yeah. And you're like, yep. I- I'm sorry. Yeah. Is it both of you just get in a plane and, you know, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. like, I just like, I, I, that's the kind of <laughs> stuff where I'm like, I, nobody needs a voice. Like, I really mean this. Like, I think Twitter, like, nobody needs a voice. Com- I love that. It should get rid of comedians and it, like, and every normal person. It should be authors of like verified scientific fact yeah. books, you know, scientists, a few mathematicians, not even politicians, really. Like it should just be people who can give you objective facts and that's it. But like the rest of it, I'm like, yo, like this is great. That or it should cost $10,000 a tweet. <laughs> $10,000 a tweet is, is the way to handle this for sure. <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent. But I definitely see those same tweets too. And the funniest thing about them is like that for that first one you mentioned, like, you know, people who were super talented as kids and now they're bummer. It's like, this is just you justifying that you're a failure. Like, right, and you're exactly. just like, you're, you're blaming your failure on how talented you are, which is even more embarrassing. Sociopathic. Yes. It's like, okay, I'm sorry because you could kind of draw, but you also played baseball as a child. Yeah. Like that's why you're unemployed now <laughs> like you know what i mean like because that's the thing it's like they're you don't people. know what it was like i had a pencil in one hand and a baseball in the other <laughs> fuck but you, know you. I mean? like there's so many people who have all those talents who actually didn't get the chance yeah to exploit them 
And so the reason they are unemployed is because like just a string of bad luck and they've constantly just been like, please, I will do anything for work. <laughs> They're unemployed and just, because and it just won't happen for them. You know yeah. yeah. Like, that's an actual, that's a struggle. But being like, oh, my God, what do I choose? I, I grew up to too home. rich. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I could so choose crazy. any lane. <laughs> Man, it sucked. And the other kid's like, oh, yeah. I didn't become uh, I didn't become famous because I had to melt snow in my bathtub for drinking water. Right, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't confused it's at not. all. I was just hungry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a good scalding hot take. That, that was, was a great hot take. scalded. <laughs> ow, that was a great scalding hot. I almost hurt myself. It was like such oh, a good yeah. take. Uh, you got any more scalding hot takes for us, Graham? I got no good ones, but I got more hot takes. <laughs> there's a there's a big conservative uh, uh, get together, uh -huh. and then there, but a young conservative. Uh, it was a CPAC, I think, is the, the yep. name of this get together, and uh, this this. Spoke person, young Pharaoh. He goes by young Pharaoh. Yeah. He said that uh, Judaism is a complete lie. And uh -huh. he also pushed a pizza gate, the pizza gate conspiracy. Yeah. And this is a, this is a mainstream uh -huh. thing. And so my, my take is that, um, He's cool. yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> my take was going to be that I think, I think he's wrong. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Look. I, and that he probably shouldn't have that platform. I think. Here's what I think. That's my take. I, I think that if someone is going by young Pharaoh, yeah. then based on the actions of the old Pharaohs, right. we, yeah. we can yes. assume this guy isn't way into Jews. That's you know? a very good point. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Boy, oh, boy. That's it. I'll, I'll say this. Like, I'm assuming young Pharaoh's a young young nigga i would i would assume so sounds like a hotep to me yeah i i this is my my hot take there are no black conservatives that don't hate you oh yeah so they sure. really gotta <laughs> yeah there is not one so right. stop inviting them. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like this is this is my hot take conservatives trying to be woke in that regard is yeah. actually hurting y'all like don't do it instead just be like look we're all white like we know how to like we know how to navigate the jew water <laughs> yeah <laughs> like we kind of just won't bring it up you know what i mean <laughs> but like every time every single time they're like you know what we got a we got an excited young black conservative the first thing they do is just like <laughs> The Holocaust yeah. dummy <laughs> is funny. Uh, and you're like, okay. Yeah. Uh, and it's like also like why you couldn't you couldn't have found uh, like uh, only black conservative I like is the little the little guy. <laughs> <What's his name? laughs> the little guy, you know the one. <laughs> you know he tiny, he teeny tiny. <laughs> um, Can we hear that little that voice again? You just did the little guy. You know the little one. Oh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's real. That's yeah, real. Bad. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Terrence something like. Uh, you guys don't know something about the little tiny black conservative, and he's like, no. he's like so clearly gay. Okay. But he's just like, mm -hmm. it's <laughs> booty time and Terrence's house. <laughs> now, what did you say? Uh, DJ T done did it again for <laughs> us. Like, uh, he's he also like I also love the thing about conservatives that they're all like stand up comedian. Yeah, activist. And you're like, ah, <laughs> oh, crap. Like, th that's the thing that's a bummer is that like technically they are because yeah. technically they're funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They all took you know? Mike Huckabee's comedy class, so they yeah. really <laughs> have it dialed in. That's a good one. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. So, do you have any uh, advice for us on how we could be uh, more edgy, or do you have any? Uh, if you want to tell an edgy story, whatever you want to do, but uh, ideally, some advice for us. Uh, on how to be more edgy. You know what? And I, <clears throat> this is like, and I, I'm not, this is actual advice. If, the, if this is the, the <laughs> point is to be edgy, I would say have a third female host. That's mostly off camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> that 
anytime <laughs> you guys like say something that's yeah. even remotely intelligent, you can be like, you didn't get that, did you, Sheer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then just like, oh, look at the, it, and never actually say what you're talking about. Yeah. Just like, oh, look at those things. They're looking good today. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like I, I feel like because the edgelordness of it all right now, it's like, it, you know, it's kind of hard because it's like, what are you going to do? Say school shootings don't exist. Like that's already happened. I feel like mm. go back a little bit like shock jock days and like really belittle a woman who's sitting right in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> and she needs the money. So she has yeah, to take yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Like an old, like a 1950s secretary or something. Yeah. 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 We can set up a stuffed animal in the corner. It'll do the, it'll get, it'll get the effect across. Yeah. Nah, I've got to be a real chick. Baby. <laughs> well, that was my advice. I hope it makes. I appreciate it. It, it, it is good. good advice. Well, that was very good advice. Uh, yeah. Yasser, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for being a five kettlebell edge lord yourself. Early, Possibly you. uh, six or seven with the tap out shaved pubes. Yes. Uh, I mean that would be. That. We'd buy <laughs> extra. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, right. yeah, I think that's our podcast, right? Is there anything you'd like to? to yeah. Promote do you want to plug, plug promote? Uh. I have a podcast with my brother called My Brother Sneaker. You find it wherever you find podcasts. Man. Great. That's a great podcast with uh, Isaiah Lester, Yasser's brother. Oh. Good podcast. If you're a sneakerhead or not, you just want to hear a couple of people be funny, it's a good podcast. Uh, well, Yasser, thank you so much. Uh, and, yeah. Thank y'all. We'll catch you later. Stay edgy. Stay edgy. Is that what we're going to start saying now? That's our thing. <laughs> All right. I no, like we it. Invented, <laughs> I invented right now. <laughs> Yasser, stay edgy. Bye, buddy. All right. Thanks. Nice guys. meeting you. Well, that was fun. We learned a lot. We did learn a lot. Yeah. Another I mean, edgy guest. Yeah, I took some notes. We're going to hire a woman in demeanor. Yes. I think that's going to really take us to the next level. People want it, yes. and they're going to hear it. But not, not her. Uh, no, they absolutely won't. We're not getting her a mic. She'll just go like, oh, oh guys. These guys, and they'll only pick up in our mics because we yeah, wouldn't yeah. have given her a mic. Oh, uh, yeah, you don't like that? And that's what's gonna. So that's exciting. That's a, an exciting development. We'll put a Craigslist ad out there. Yes, um, woman, woman to objectify. Or maybe we'll just do go on like Fiverr and hire some woman overseas and just put her on the screen. Yeah, the, that's an option corner. too. That's an option. Yeah, I say we do it. I say we try all of the, all, every combination of different <laughs> types of women to demean for our podcast. Woman to demean on Fiverr. <laughs> yeah, I bet if you type that in, you will find it. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, uh, Robbie, where can people find you? Uh, well, you can, uh, first of all, make sure you're subscribed to the Edge Lords here, uh, wherever you get podcasts or yeah. on YouTube. You can subscribe to YouTube if you're watching us that way. Yeah. Uh, and then you can get me on Twitter or Instagram or everywhere at, at Robbie Slovic. And uh, if, if you want to review the podcast, it helps us a lot. All you have to do, I know on iTunes, is, some people don't know how to do it. You just scroll down until you see the stars. On, on your, yep, on your app, down, and hit, then you hit the five stars. You hit the five stars, yeah, and then you leave us a review. You smash those stars. Uh, you can, you got to smash, smash those stars. I and, uh, implore it, you to smash them. <laughs> you got to smash the stars, Neil deGrasse Tyson mm -hmm. style, mm -hmm. and whatever okay. uh, you can type in whatever you want for that review. But uh, ideally, make it say uh, it, it it helped women respect my power. Yes, that is the goal. Of that this is the podcast. Goal. And uh, also you can find me at Instagram K on Instagram, obviously. And you can find me at Mr. Graham K on, on Twitter. Guys, yeah. you know, as we always say, Robbie. The end of every episode. Fuck, fuck you. you.